So the most basic properties of a wave are the wavelength, the frequency, and the speed. The wavelength is the distance between two peaks. The frequency is how many times a peak passes a location every second. So thinking about our simulation, um, every time we saw a maximum in the electric field, we could count. And however many times we counted, a maximum per second would be the frequency. Um, and then the speed is given by the product of the frequency and wavelength. Wavelength is denoted by Greek letter lambda. So our speed equation is V is equal to F lambda. And because the speed of light is constant, then that means that any time that we change either the wavelength or the frequency, it affects the other quantity. So that means a uh, long frequency, if this is a large number, corresponds to a smaller frequency, a lower frequency, uh, because the speed has to be the same at all times. So if one of those quantities goes up, the other one has to go down. So let me just give you a, a little example of how you would actually apply this mathematically. Um, we're not gonna apply it mathematically often, but I want to show you how it works just to give you another example and scientific notation example too. So since we know the speed of light is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second, then if we know the wavelength of some light, let's say a green light from a, a laser, then we can calculate its frequency. Um, so how would I do that? I have to rearrange my equation. So dividing both sides by lambda gives me the frequency is equal to the speed divided by the wavelength. And I plug in my numbers, three times 10 to the eight meters per second is the speed of light. And then our wavelength of light for a green laser is 500 nanometers. And we have to remember our SI prefix of nano means 10 to the minus nine. So that's my setup. Um, my meters will cancel here. And then I will just apply my rules of uh, arithmetic and scientific notation. So dividing the three by the 500, subtracting the minus nine from the eight in my exponents. And I'm left with a unit once the meters cancel of one over seconds. And if I go ahead and finish off my calculation, I get 0 0.006 times 10 to the 17. I could rewrite this 0 0.006 as six to the minus three, and then combine that with the 10 to the 17. 17 minus three is 14. So I'd get six times 10 to the 14 Hertz. And um, the Hertz is a unit just defined as one divided by one second. So you might be familiar with this if you've ever done any electronics. Um, it's also used to describe the refresh rates of things like your computer screen. Uh, and that just means one divided by one second. All right, so that's my example. Um, and a, a critical thing to notice here is that the wavelength describes the color of light. Uh, we'll delve into this in more detail next time, um, but I just wanna bring this up now that there's light uh, in many different wavelength ranges, and only a tiny fraction of that is what we would call visible light. Um, so I wanna jump to this simulation here. Here it is. And uh, you can play with this on your own too. I'll go ahead and drop that link in the chat for the electromagnetic spectrum. And you can drag this little slider around our visible spectrum. It's probably a, a little bit hard to see on the gray background here. Um, but if I go to very short wavelengths in my visible range, like between three and 400 nanometers, then I have very short wavelength uh, purple light. If I go to the red, you can see my crests are getting farther and farther apart. So my wavelengths are getting longer and longer. And my frequency, the number of, of times a peak would pass every second if this wave was moving through space, that's getting longer and longer or lower. So, uh, the visible spectrum is just this tiny slice and uh, at longer and longer wavelengths, we have infrared light, microwave uh, radiation and radio waves. And then at higher and higher uh, frequencies, higher energies, which means short wavelengths, we have our ultraviolet light, x-rays and our gamma rays. And um, the other feature I wanna show you here is this idea that light can be seen both as a wave and as a photon. And a way to think about this is saying that um, light can be uh, thought of as a continuous wave, but in reality, it's more like a ball that you could throw and catch. It's more like a particle. And the way that we reconcile these two ideas of light 
is by saying that a photon, a particle of light, is like a wave that's been bunched up into this little packet. So we call this a wave packet. Uh, so a photon still has a wavelength because it's, it's still sort of a wave nature um, object, but you can also think of it as an object that you can throw and catch. So uh, the, the photon view of light is going to be more relevant when we're talking about um, atoms and how they absorb and emit light. Uh, but the wave view of light is the more relevant way that we usually talk about light with respect to its wavelength and its frequency. Thinking of energy uh, as something that is higher for high frequency, then my question for you is, which of these photons would have the highest energy? The 450 nanometer blue photon, the 500 nanometer green photon, or the 632 nanometer red photon? <laughs> 